ready? Get set, go. In measuring off and placing all the beams temporarily, I've established a center line with my laser against a center line marked on the beams. And I've inverted the beams because I want to pick up a dimension on the beam of this deck flange. So inverting the frames, I can mark the intersection of the deck flange and the top of the frame just by scribing under here. And that gives me the inboard edge of the flange from which I measure off the rest of the breadth of the beam. And if you take a look here, this is the angle that I've gotten on the port side. And then I will pick up a bevel to the underside of the flange, which is right here with my bevel square. And if this is the inboard edge, and I've measured off that the depth of this flange is an inch and seven eighths, I'll mark that edge. And mark the bevel, which is the side of the hull. And I can pick up the fore and aft angle which would be right here. The trick is, obviously, if we've started with this upside down, this will actually be set to the opposite side. are all going to be perpendicular cuts or 90 degrees to the face of the carlin which runs parallel to the side deck flange which will then also be a perpendicular cut so the mortise that I'm putting in here is cut on a bias from the bottom edge of the carlin, which is here, to, and somewhat arbitrarily, I picked a depth on the inside of the third lamination, going all the way to the outside, just adds a bit more 
delicacy, which there's no good reason for here. We're not getting paid to be delicate. We're getting paid to reconstruct this boat. now is the process of anchoring the beams by mechanical and adhesive means to the hull flange and the carlin. The first step in the process is basically priming the deck beams where they're going to be meeting in an, an adhesive joint with the Jamestown distributors two-part epoxy with no thickener added. This is to saturate uh, the wood so our joints aren't dry. The second part of the process is the application of the Thixo flexible adhesive which we're going to be applying into this joiner notch that receives the inboard end of the deck frame. And then we're also applying it to the deck beam. This is the notch in the top of the deck beam that lies under the hull to deck flange. The end of the deck beam lies alongside the hull. And of special note, what we're doing here is we're borrowing typical construction detail from the metal boat building trades and that is by anchoring the bottom of the deck beam with a clip which provides uh, more surface area for the adhesive and also a bigger compression pad on the outboard end of the deck beam which is secured with a quarter inch bronze machine screw. Now we're ready to put it in place. The outboard end slips underneath the hull flange and the inboard end is seated into the notch that we've made in the carlin. As I said, everything has been pre-fitted so we can run a wood screw in the end. There our inboard end is of the deck beam is seated in the notch. We're ready to apply adhesive to the outboard edge of the clip. This is the edge that's going to lie against the hull. And a bit where the bottom side of the deck beam is going to be joining the clip. doing is we're using this join <coughs> area to lay a, two layers of 10 ounce cloth along the hull and along the deck beam, increasing the area of adhesion even more. 